One of the most important parts of the loan application is knowing your down payment. This is a question that you frequently ask, Sean, how much money do I need to buy a house? Now that's a loaded question. That depends on several factors, whether it's the occupancy, the type of home you're buying, the sales price, your, your debt to income ratio. There's a number of factors that I'm gonna look at to tell you how much money you're gonna to need to qualify. I'm gonna share with you a few stories to help you understand how that pertains to you and your home buying journey. And if we've never met before, my name is Sean Uihara. I'm a sales manager with Loan Depot, helping you finance your homes all across America, whether it's your first home or you're an investor buying multiple properties, buying a vacation home, or you're thinking of refinancing to save some money. We've got you covered all across America. You can hit the description for links for more information on how to get your mortgage right. Let's start with Phil. He's utilizing FHA financing. FHA is great because it's very lenient on guidelines in terms of credit scores, debt to income ratios, and it's a lot easier for more clients and borrowers to qualify for this type of financing. For example, FHA actually allows us to go all the way down to a 520 credit score to get financing. Most people still think you have to have a 720 credit score to qualify. That's totally not the case. FHA, with the right lender, you can go down to a 520 and still get a loan. Now, in terms of your debt to income ratio, FHA allows you to even surpass 50%. Most people still think you have to be in the 30 or 40% range, but with compensating factors, and if we can get an approval through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's online underwriting system, you can actually push the envelope and get over 50%. So our client, Phil, wasn't the best with taking care of his credit back in the day when he was younger. He had his moments, maxed out a few credit cards, forgot to pay his credit card bill, or even forgot to pay his phone bill. His credit score today is a 640. Not the best, but not the worst kind of middle of the road, which is actually still good for a FHA loan. He is considered FHA financing because of that very reason. His credit history is a little blemished. So we are gonna look at FHA financing, which only requires three and a half percent down. And another program that also falls in line with FHA financing is the FHA 203K. The 203K is a renovation loan. The renovation loan is a great program to utilize because you can actually finance the cost of your repairs of your property into your mortgage up front. This is a very underutilized program, but if you're working with a lender that is familiar with renovation financing, it is a great way to get into your home and customize it the way you'd like. So when you move in, everything's ready to go. Next up, we have James. James is also a first time home buyer, but James was a little more responsible than Phil. So James actually has a 720 credit score. James is looking to use conventional financing in order to purchase his first property. Now, James being a first time home buyer, he can put three to 5% down. This is the advantage when we were younger, if we took care of our credit, we've got a really good score and we can leverage that today to use conventional financing to get us into a home mortgage. Now, the big toss up between FHA and conventional is the mortgage insurance. So with FHA, your monthly mortgage insurance is on your loan indefinitely until you refinance out of your property. On a conventional loan, you have mortgage insurance until you hit that 22% equity mark in your home loan. You can either contact your servicer, see if they have an expedited way to remove your mortgage insurance, or you can contact your lender who did your purchase to help you get out of your mortgage insurance and save you some money on your home loan. Next up, we have Carlos. He's already a homeowner, and now Carlos has lived in his house for several years, but he's tired of the cold. He wants somewhere warm that he can take his beautiful wife and enjoy the winter months. When he opens his window back home, he's got snow everywhere and he's tired of shoveling his driveway. So what Carlos loves to do is vacation out west. He's looking at warm states like Phoenix and he wants to be able to go out and enjoy the warm weather. Now, when Carlos looks to purchase a vacation home, the minimum down payment is gonna be 10% down. Now, the term that gets thrown around loosely in the industry is your vacation home slash second home. And a lot of you think that a second home means I have to own my first home, when in actuality, it just means it's not where your primary residence is. So we see this quite often with all you snowbirds that live in cold weathers, and then you end up buying a vacation home in warmer weathers, or you like to ski or snowboard. So maybe you buy a cabin up in the mountains. So it's just your vacation home or your second home that you spend your time with. And next up, we have Chris. 
Chris is our investor. He owns multiple properties and he's looking to build his portfolio and start building passive cash flow for his future. When you look at purchasing an investment property, the minimum down payment is 20 to 25%. Now there's a huge price break that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the way they price their mortgages between a 20 and 25% down payment for an investor. So if you're thinking of buying an investment property, make sure that your loan officer gives you several options. I always talk to a number of investors and they always wanna put the least amount of money down. When you do that, your interest rate is so much higher. Like I said, make sure when you're working with your lender, they give you some options so you can see how the price break works and what the difference is and the monthly savings and how much interest it's gonna save you on the life of your loan. And of course, how much cash flow is that gonna bring in for you in the future? Now we're moving on to Brandon. Brandon's done a great job of keeping his credit up high. He's also looking to renovate his home in order to purchase, so that way he can find something that he truly likes because he's getting frustrated with the market. There's also a conventional renovation loan called Home Styles. The one difference that this program has that the FHA 203K doesn't have is you can actually put a pool when you purchase your home and include that into the cost of your loan. Pretty cool, right? Imagine you're struggling to find a house, especially with this tight inventory that's out there in the marketplace today. You love the bones of the house. Maybe you just don't like the paint, the kitchen cabinets, the kitchen countertops, the bathrooms, you could actually renovate all of that, pull a pool in your backyard, and move into the home with as little as 5% down. This, like the 203K, is very underutilized. So if you are in the marketplace looking to buy a property right now and you are struggling to find something that meets all your needs, talk to your loan officer about a renovation loan because this might be your saving grace to help you get into the home just like Brandon. Next up, we have Zach. Zach loves the wilderness. He loves rural America and being by himself. Zach is gonna be looking at utilizing a USDA loan. No money down, 100% financing. The caveat is you have to purchase a home that's considered rural by the USDA. So again, when you talk to your loan officer and this is something that you're leaning towards, give him the property address that maybe you're looking at or maybe the zip codes that you're looking at to see if it's gonna be eligible for USDA financing. Again, another great program, as long as the home meets the eligibility, no money down, you can't beat that. Next up, we have Randy. He served in the military and we are thankful for his service. Randy is gonna be utilizing VA financing. VA financing, just like USDA, is no money down. One of the best loans out there. And one of the myths about VA loans is that they're actually worse off than others. It makes me cringe when I hear real estate agents say that about VA loans, when in actuality, the veteran has earned the right to utilize that loan program. There is nothing bad about the loan. In fact, there are many benefits to VA financing. In fact, we should advocate for our veterans, for home ownership to help them because they've served our country and fought for our freedoms. And next, we have Shane, our entrepreneur who's self-employed, running a business, but the one caveat that Shane has is that he writes off all of his income. So all of you that are self-employed, just like Shane, that struggle when it comes to tax time, and you might have made hundreds of thousands of dollars or maybe even millions of dollars, but your accounting is so good that he writes off most of your income so you don't get raked over the coals by Uncle Sam. Now Shane is gonna utilize our bank statement program. This is something where we can look at the last 12 or 24 months of your bank statements and we can utilize the deposits and average them out to give you that as part of your income to qualify for your home loan. How cool, right? So even though you might struggle to qualify on paper with your tax returns, there are alternative sources to financing like our bank statement program, where you can put as little as 10% down if it's your primary residence, or if you're looking at a second home or a vacation home, you can put as little as 20% down. Now, which one of these clients are you gonna be? If you are thinking about purchasing or refinancing and you're not sure which category you fall in, Make sure to check out this playlist to help you understand how to get your mortgage right. But if you still have questions, you can comment below and I can help you with your home purchase or refinance. My name is Sean Uihara. I'll see you on the next video.